speaker in this lightning session is Susan Starr from St Vincent's Hospital and she'll be talking to us about semantic therapy, the what and how. to inpatient rehabilitation um, not only have significant communication difficulties but also difficulty accessing their semantic system is highly likely as well. The National Stroke Guidelines and the Aphasia Pathway talk about you know, treatment aspect, uh, basing treatment on aspects of language following models from Cogneuro and obviously therapy looking at phonology and semantics. There's limited research as we heard yesterday about auditory comprehension and there's lots and lots of research, as we know, on naming. I really feel auditory comprehension is often an area that is overlooked. I guess speech pathologists really do focus on naming, but we need to know more about the relationship between auditory comprehension and the impact that has on therapy, for, especially for naming. Here is a recent case study. So uh, these patients were all in inpatient rehabilitation with me this year, and they all came from the acute hospital. So. Um, one was at the acute hospital for eight weeks and then came and then a couple of the others were only in acute for three weeks and then they came across. So just very quickly, uh, patient one, as you can see, 63, wasn't working, had a clot or, or an ischemic stroke. His length of stay in inpatient rehab, 96 days. Patient two, 28, once again working, a clot, length of stay in inpatient rehab, 28 days. And patient three was 63, maybe working had a hemorrhage um, and was with us for 47 days. I, I'm going to talk about semantic therapy um, and I'm going to go on now and look at the Western Aphasia Battery Rev Revised Screener. So we've talked, everyone knows the WAP, but this is actually the screener. So we often do this routinely where I work. And as you can see with the two patients who had the clot, they've got very low scores there. And also the person with the hemorrhage as well, very low score there. So these were patients that weren't answering yes, no questions, weren't following commands, unable to repeat, unable to name, unable to read, unable to write. And then um, PALPA 47, spoken word picture matching, PALPA 48, written word picture matching. Once again, you can see there on the slide, these scores are low and they're definitely not within the normal range. And PALPA 53, which is naming. Once again, the first two patients, I just did the first 10, they couldn't name. And then the last one, we did give him the 40 and he actually could do seven out of the 40. On admission to inpatient rehab, they didn't have functional communication skills. This um, is something that I have learned a great deal about, I feel. So in rehab, I think it's a really common goal to want to establish a reliable yes, no. But I think really as therapists, we really need to understand the mechanism underneath this. So do they actually understand what's been said. What does semantic therapy look like? So spoken word picture matching, written word picture matching, odd one out tasks, categorization, spoken word verification tasks. These are all things that we can be doing clinically and, and most likely hopefully doing. Um, I'm going to go through these a little bit, but I guess with these tasks, like with therapy in general, you might just start off initially with two objects and they would be semantically different and then you would build them up um, to, you know, maybe it's six objects that are actually semantically um, very similar or in, the, or in the same category. So very quickly, as we can see here, spoken word picture matching, you could say to the patient, point to the banana, they're obviously very, you know, two different categories here. Written word picture matching, you could have the word written underneath and ask the patient, you know, and give the patient the written word, ask them to find. This is um, spoken word verification task. So once again, you would show the patient the word, the picture hat, and then you as the therapist, this is me with the blonde hair, you would say coat, and then they would have to tell you whether that actually
actually was the same or different. So these are the results of these patients. So you can see, I haven't crunched any of these numbers very well, but probably by 2020, I could have a p-value. And, um, <laughs> but they've improved. They've improved is all I'd say. And what did I learn though? So, you know, I think assessment is really important. Doctors love a score. I really think that's valuable for us. Collaborative goal setting is important. Semantic therapy does work and it's important. And there's no quick fix for these patients with significant problems. Thank you. Thank you.